I think we might start. So I would like to welcome you all for the second day of our conference. And I think it will be very interesting day as we are gonna focus on uh, something which is uh, a pending public health issue. So today, the, um, the, the actually the whole day will be dedicated to non-communicable diseases and we will have here plenty of presentations uh, which give you opportunity to look at this very complex issue from different angles. Uh, I have a, a great speakers with me. Uh, one of them will join us online as unfortunately he could not be here in presence. One of them is somewhere in car, but <laughs> he should make it. He should make it. Uh, and uh, one last thing be before I'm gonna to start um, to start introducing our uh, presenters is yesterday, all of you received a short briefing paper that uh, together with Professor Heino Stover, we um, developed some time ago. It's a briefing paper uh, about uh, social work and how social workers could be involved and included into helping people to quit smoking. So there are different approaches to quit uh, smoking and because it's also, it is, uh, um, it fits perfectly into the topic of non-communicable diseases, I would uh, encourage you to, uh, to read it. It's in Russian, although of course we have uh, English version as well. So uh, if you'd like to receive English version, please uh, approach me. So, um, Great panel, uh, not panel, uh, great session uh, ahead of us. Uh, the role of harm reduction and regulations in tackling non communicable diseases. Uh, the first, so let me just briefly introduce all of the uh, presenters. Uh, we will start with Begayim uh, Yegimbaeva. Uh, who operates as a communication officer at the Swiss project Effective Management and Prevention of Non-Communicable Diseases in Kyrgyzstan. And she will tell us uh, a little bit about effective management of prevention of non-communicable diseases in, uh, in Kyrgyzstan. Uh, then we have with us um, Nurgozin Talgat uh, Seitanovich, who will tell us a little bit about the issues of uh, counterfeit pharmaceutical products. Uh, he's a, a professor, he's a doctor, head of the department at uh, Al-Farabi Kazakh State University. Finally, we will hear from uh, Raktabek Mamitkuyev, who um, who is a practitioner and will tell us about the role of rural health committees in uh, non-communicable uh, preventions. Then we will connect with our online uh, presenter, Shamil Saganovich Tajibayev, uh, who is a um, uh, doctor, professor, uh, academician of the uh, Academy of Preventive Medicine, also laureate of the state prize of the Republic of Kazakhstan for science, technology, and education. And we will um, finalize our session with uh, Grebennikova Galina Alexandrovna, who is a, a gynecologist and executive director of the Kazakhstan Association of Reproduct Reproductive and Sexual Health. Health, And sh uh, she will uh, tell us about the role of harm reduction concept in promotion of reproductive health of population. So without further ado, let me, uh, let me um, invite Spigai Migima. Здравствуйте, уважаемые коллеги. Сегодня я хотела бы рассказать о деятельности швейцарского проекта «Эффективное управление и профилактика неинфекционных заболеваний в Кыргызстане». So the goal of the project is to improve the health outcomes of the population by providing 
equal access to high-quality services at PHC level and also a health promotion among the people of Kyrgyzstan. And we are working for two major co components, and the first one is aimed at working with the PHC facilities of Kyrgyzstan, and the second component, this is to work with the population to do the informational campaign and many other activities aimed at NCD prevention. So what is the geography of our project during the first phase, which took part from 19 till 2022? We worked in China, in Talas, Isakul provinces. And at the second phase, which started July last year and to be continued till 2024, this will be the geography of the southern part plus Jalabatalas and the Bishkek and the Osh cities. The key beneficiaries of the project, these are the healthcare workers and also the villages of the Kyrgyz Republic. And the main partners of the project, this is the MOH, the Ministry of Science and Education, Mandatory Health Insurance Fund, Postgraduate Institution for Medical Workers, uh, WHO, Health Promotion Center, and also the local municipalities. And the subcontractor of the project is the Association of the Village Health Committee. So these are the partners with whom we implement our activities together. I also would like to speak about the activities of the project within each component. As to the first component, it is divided into two activities. The first is management and governance. Here we conduct such activities as enhancing internal audit for the quality, increase of services in the NCD area, and we do this with the involvement of the village health committees and an active cooperation with the mand mandatory health insurance fund. Also, the project uh, undertakes activities to streamline the referral system between the different healthcare organizations, and here we have developed clear algorithm for referral of patients and which is now being integrated to the outpatient card database which is under the development and also we are working in order to increase the budget transparency and here we involve the members of the quality committees uh, to the budgeting process thus increasing the transparency of the budgeting process and as well as the effectiveness and also we are partners with the e-health center under the ministry of health and such questions as the provision of equipment for phc facilities promotion of the e-appointment system and also we work with the population in order to inform them about this newly arriving service and also we are supporting the development of the outpatient card database where the which has integrated the referral system and the second uh, activity under the first component, this is NCD management. And here, uh, project works uh, to improve the delivery of services at PHC level uh, for NCDs. And the project has trained uh, all PHC workers on uh, PEN protocol of WHO, and these protocols are introduced to PHC operations and being actively used by the staff. And also we use peer-to-peer -peer approach, and this is uh, peer G peer uh, peer-reviewed uh, groups. So when physicians and the nurses train each other and do the cascade of the knowledge, we believe that this is very efficient way of the of spreading the expertise. And also the project works to increase the role of nurses in the NCD management. As you know, the NCD patients need regular follow-up and management, and this is 
uh, in the competences competences of nurses and we introduce nursing process uh, uh, and also we introduce a school for patients for hypertension and diabetes patients so such schools for patients were introduced during the first stage in the northern part of the country and uh, right now we are uh, delivering the training for the nurses uh, in the southern part of the country and we hope that school for patients will be fully uh, completed uh, uh, as a national coverage towards the end of the year and uh, also the, i will be giving you very brief information about the second component how we work with the population because our partner association of village health committees shall speak about that later but i would like just to highlight that the project works on early adherence and commitment to the healthy lifestyle so we work with schools together with the ministry of education we have developed ncd safety roadmap and uh, the teachers of uh, schools have been trained uh, on the subject uh, to conduct extracurricular activities to give more information to children about NCD prevention and also we conduct informational campaigns for the adult population to be covered with more details by my colleague but I would like to highlight that two activities were institutionalized by MIH. This is the screening of the uh, blood pressure among the population, which is done by the village health committees. And uh, starting from September this year, because uh, this is a campaign which starts every year in autumn time, so village health committees will be officially submitting the screening data to MOH, and then MOH will be enabled to, to monitor and to see uh, whether the patients who have been screened with high blood pressure uh, eventually arrived to the PHC level. And also we have another campaign which is named Be Responsible, which covers the male population with the PHC services because the mortality rate from NCDs in men is very high in Kyrgyzstan, but the, uh, the rate of the uh, referrals um, suited. This is a very low number of men applying to PHC services and that's why we decided to conduct this campaign together with the uh, public schools so that uh, uh, school children would uh, uh, share the leaflets uh, at family level at the village level uh, so in order to increase uh, the uptake at the PHC level for the male population first to do the screening and then proper enro enrollment to the treatment program and that was a very successful campaign and uh, therefore MOH issued the order that this campaign should be repeated uh, each year at autumn time and uh, we have conducted this campaign this year already in February and about 100,000 males applying to PHC facilities to get the consultancy on NCD prevention. We are also introducing small grants program both among the higher educational institutions but also at the level of municipalities. Universities of Bishkek City invited students to give the information, but we have realized that it's not enough just to spread the information. Therefore, we decided to launch the grant program in order to support favorable conditions for NCD prevention among young people so that students are motivated to change the lifestyle 2.5 million sums of euro uh, allocated for these grounds and also 15 percent that was a contribution from the local municipalities and uh, about uh, 40 million sums were allocated uh, to support local municipalities and the in-kind contribution from the applicant should be not less than 30 percent and this is to be described with greater details by my colleagues 
And to give you some of the statistics, here we would like to show you the comparison as to the public awareness rate among the provinces in the northern part of the country about the risk factors associated with NCD. So we have taken CAP uh, studies. This is about the knowledge, attitude, and practices. So it has been done in 2018 and also at the end of 2021 it was repeated and so you can see the dynamics, how the uh, rate, awareness rate has increased. And so for today we can say population is better aware of the risk factors and uh, as to the, the dynamics we can also can say that with our activities, the spread of the risk factors decreased alongside with increased uh, awareness rate. So this is about our project in social media. And if you want to get more information about the project, you can sus get subscribed to Facebook, Instagram pages and also we have the website where we can share more information both for medical staff and for the population thank you very much for your presentation it was very interesting to learn about um the activities that your uh, uh project uh, includes and you mentioned a couple of times the role of uh, the nurses and in the next session we will elaborate more uh, on the important role of um of the nurses uh, and right now, I would like to invite uh, Nurgorin Talgat Saidranovic. I'm so sorry for mispronouncing your <laughs> surname. Talgat. Good morning, dear colleagues. It is a great pleasure to make uh, my speech in front of such a uh, honorable audience uh, and uh, I would like to express my thanks to the host of this uh, conference. I am going to raise the issues related to pharmaceuticals, uh, medicines and uh, I was uh, uh, requested the topic about the counterfeit uh, pharmaceuticals and I would like to start my presentation by uh, small uh, remarks uh, the ex-prime minister of Norway and ex-general director of WHO, Ms. Uh, Harlem Rutland. Uh, she spoke uh, at the anniversary of 25 uh, anniversary of the list of uh, uh, essential drugs and their importance. So she said that drugs is a special good, the good which uh, in effect the health of the nation in fact uh, uh, it uh, has a it plays quite a cr crucial role in terms of uh, trading uh, oil and gas and then weapons and then drugs and the third uh, is ranked the pharmaceuticals uh, and the counterfeit uh, counterfeit uh, medicines were uh, the most uh, um, <clears throat> obvious and evident during the pandemic. And uh, my presentation is focused uh, on the events uh, which occurred during the pandemic about the risk and situations, uh, not only in my, uh, our country, but those countries which were uh, strictly and rigidly controlling the pharmaceutical market. Uh, uh, you can look at the modern uh, uh, challenges and problems and analysis uh, of uh, falsified medicines. Uh, there are several uh, phases of uh, falsification or adulteration uh, when the goods are imported without any proper marking, uh, when it is a substandard uh, goods, uh, substandard goods, uh, the main reasons uh, behind the poor quality of uh, pharmaceuticals, maybe this is to do was uh, due to non-compliance with GMP. Uh, is in particular it is taking place in countries uh, with low income and countries uh, where the consumption of uh, uh, medicines and access to pharmaceuticals is uh, very low and uh, due to this uh, the WHO World Health Organization at the beginning of the last century 
in the mid of the 70s, uh, I created the, the list of essential drugs, uh, which uh, every country uh, should be supplied with. Uh, and if we talk about the access uh, to to healthcare and uh, uh, access to medicines, uh, this is uh, one of the top priority of the constitutional rights of the citizens in all the countries. My pointer, uh, for some reason, is not working here. Oh, I have to move it here. How does it work? Uh, we are a very impatient uh, nation, people in Kazakhstan. Now it went uh, the other way around. Now, now I know. Uh, one at a time, and we have to take a pause. Uh, very interesting. Uh, in my uh, presentation, I included in. Uh, the uh, the uh, uh, report of WHO on the market of counterfeit uh, drugs. Every tenth uh, uh, product uh, or uh, medical item is a substandard or falsified or adulted uh, uh, good. Uh, and uh, the uh, worth of uh, uh, the adulted or falsified the medicines uh, worth of 30 billion, uh, mainly uh, antibiotics, uh, analgetics, and uh, malaria drugs in African countries are mostly subject to adulteration. And we have uh, lots of messages and reports uh, from Africa and the American continent and also European continent. So we have to take a pause here, right? Uh, here, uh, can you please uh, have a look at the uh, a report of the UN office in 2020 during the pandemic? Uh, there was uh, the surge, a surge of in the smuggling of counterfeit medicines and medical items. And they have uh, declared or initiated the international operation Pangir as an emergency measure to counteract uh, these uh, counterfeit uh, products. Over the seven months of the operation, uh, they have arrested uh, 121 people in 90 countries and uh, they have seized uh, the major counterfeit uh, drugs uh, worth of 14 million uh, dollars. Uh, can you imagine the turnover, the tremendous, uh, dramatic turnover of counterfeit drugs in the world? Uh, this uh, research was done in England. Uh, I am I'm starting this uh, in, on purpose uh, from the developed countries and moving towards the developing countries. There are the cross-sectional studies uh, uh, studies in in uh, uh, UK pharmacies and how they were reported to appropriate agencies and services, what kind of risks were posed by these uh, counterfeit medicines. And this map shows you the situation with counterfeit goods and medicines, uh, where they are produced and through which countries uh, these counterfeit uh, uh, medicines are imported. Can you please have a look at this map? Uh, the mainly uh, they are produced in India and China, and they are imported through uh, Southeastern Asia, Africa, Albania, Slovenia, and the entire Europe is uh, covered by this uh, channel. And this is the area. Uh, this is already well established uh, map, uh, well established route, and uh, this uh, map uh, was developed at the UN agency about the transformation of pharmaceutical uh, products in Europe. Uh, 
Now uh, let us move to Kazakhstan. You can see here uh, the uh, words of our Minister of Health and the managing director of this digital economy development center that the share of the shadow of pharmaceutical markets in Kazakhstan reaches 11 percent. This is a huge, huge percentage. And in terms of money value, it makes 57 billion tenge. And uh, the Minister of Health, uh, Giniat, uh, there are 700 facts of violations uh, for the last two years, uh, 21, 21, and 22. And uh, before leaving, uh, departing to this conference, so I have found out that law enforcement agencies, uh, they have uh, detected several pharmaceutical plants uh, where they were producing pharmaceutical products of the core pharmaceutical uh, drugs, uh, antibiotics and painkillers and this entire product is uh, imported to Central Asia and people tend to uh, use them the turnover of uh, counterfeit drugs in Kazakhstan uh, not to invent myself uh, I uh, I took the data from uh, the sources which were published in 2020 based on the customs declaration, uh, how many uh, of pharmaceuticals are imported and which countries. Uh, the first place in terms of volume of imports uh, uh, of uh, therapeutic and preventive effect uh, of uh, medicine, cardiology, uh, drugs, antibiotics, and so on, this kind of drugs. Uh, you can look 810 million Tenge was this volume of the imported drugs. 69% of all the imported drugs to Kazakhstan uh, packaged drugs in from which countries? Uh, US and Ireland. Uh, if we consider both countries, there are very tiny on zero uh, volumes of export uh, as if uh, they record this as if they are brought from US and Ireland but their customs uh, uh, records and reports don't say uh, any experts and uh, but according to um, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, nomenclature of the uh, goods for export uh, in customs declaration. And uh, this is the situation uh, of our uh, with our statistics in our customs. Uh, and uh, this is the opposite uh, statistics uh, uh, by the customs committee in Ireland and US. Uh, so we can see completely the opposite situation. So here, please uh, uh, look uh, here at the curve represents the antibiotics. And I'm going to tell you the largest, uh, the largest trend of uh, the goods was in Germany, from Germany. And, but in fact, uh, they were brought from Egypt. If the customs declaration of the import was compared 5 million from Germany, it was written in the customs declaration. And but in German declaration, only uh, 80, uh, 84,000 dollars, uh, 5 million and 84,000. Uh, can you imagine uh, this uh, discrepancy, this gap? This hormonal hormonal uh, drugs. Uh, I have selected uh, only those uh, who have special importance. Uh, as a clinician, uh, I can say that these drugs, if uh, you uh, use them, uh, if you use substandard and falsified medicines, this is the first threat to your health. Uh, hormonal drugs. I, I'm going to show you approximately. The customs, the customs of Kazakhstan reported. Has, has reported uh, there was such a surge of uh, the imports. Uh, the situation with hormonal drugs in 2020, 
they were brought 50, 594 million tenge, or 80 percent of all drugs, uh, uh, of packed drugs, and it was ranked, uh, ranked the third there. And which countries? The scope, the scope, the French, French colleagues, as if these uh, hormonal drugs uh, were brought from France, uh, they uh, show only eighty-two thousand uh, dollars, but. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, uh, the customs declaration of Kazakhstan shows uh, the imports of uh, hormonal drugs worth of millions of dollars. Uh, the professors are always get uh, engaged and uh, so uh, we have the turnover of counterfeit uh, uh, medicines in Kazakhstan. Uh, they, uh, according to the official data, they make 10, uh, 12 percent. Uh, and uh, uh, so according to the Irish customs, uh, it makes only 1 million, but in fact, it makes uh, 18 million. And uh, the, the Denmark, uh, uh, the ex imports from Denmark. Uh, uh, there are no export uh, transactions uh, with Denmark, uh, um, but according to the customs declaration, the goods were brought from Denmark, uh, Italy, uh, 48 million uh, tinge, and the Italian uh, customs uh, reports about 8.7 uh, million. And also the uh, mirror statistics on drugs and uh, their volumes uh, make uh, 4.000 uh, tons of therapeutic and preventive, preventive drugs. Uh, I don't think uh, that 19 million is used in uh, Kazakhstan. Uh, this is uh, taken further to other Central Asian countries. Uh, this is with no comments. I have received uh, these pictures uh, from our drugstores, uh, the Chinese drugs, uh, which are brought by shuttle uh, businesses. Uh, uh, they sell that uh, this is uh, good for uh, treating all kinds of disease, uh, no instructions, and this kind of uh, uh, names are uh, put in writing, in handwriting. And uh, among them, albindazol. Uh, among them, you can find albindazole. Uh, I'm about to finish, uh, otherwise uh, people are not happy with such a long presentation uh, here. Uh, this is very important uh, that our borders are closed and uh, we can always feel uh, ourselves uh, protected. And uh, in all uh, regions, we have the uh, and the pharmaceutical inspection is not uh, performing well. And uh, since 2005, I'm raising this issue uh, for so many years. I have uh, been uh, writing messages to the government, pharmaceutical control and supervision, how it should be established, uh, and uh, how EMA is uh, working is in Europe. And uh, so far, nothing has changed. Thank you very much. It was very interesting uh, lectures. Thank you so much. Uh, and when you were presenting facts, I could hear from the room one word, Ujas. And I think this is a good summary of, um, uh, of this uh, issue. So uh, I hope that the next um, presenter is with us. He is. <laughs> so let me introduce you to Rakbatek Mamitakuyev. Thank you. Good day, dear colleagues, dear participants of the event. My name is Rakhatbek Mamitakuyev. It sounds difficult uh, for English speakers, yeah? Thanks a lot, Talgat, uh, for an exciting presentation. But uh, let's go back to the presentation. So in fact, here we may find some commonalities, some common points between both presentations. So today I shall speak about the Village Health Committee's VHCs within the framework of the NCD project described by Biggie Mai. So the presentation is about the role of EHCs and the NCD prevention. Yeah. 
Yeah, you, you see, we are also relatives with Kazakh people. That's why we are also sort of inpatient. OK, what is Village Health Committee? Village Health Committee, per se, is a community-based organization uh, organized in villages. Uh, and it involves as a group of volunteers uh, who run prevention activities and also work to improve the social well-being of village residents. Uh, so we, our mission is to help healthcare system. We are not medical people. We do not do treatment. We are just helping those who want to be healthy. And the main work is done in two directions. First of all, this is a first activity to be the partner for the healthcare system to do the informational campaigns, for example. And the second component is all the self initiatives when the group of volunteers conduct the activities at the village level, which motivate healthy lifestyle. So we organize some social events like to clean the area, to improve the access to the potable water, to do the greening. Uh, you know, beautification of the landscape. So Village Health Committee, this is a huge network, one of the biggest networks in Kyrgyzstan. You can see seven provinces of the Republic. We are present in each province, and based on the self-assessment of 2021, out of 1,775 villages, we have VHCs present in 1,400, so more than 12,000 volunteers for today consider themselves to be VHC volunteers, VHC members. So, so what do we do in the project? So three main activities to do this is to inform population about the risk factors related to NCDs, which is our main activity. And then we also implement a failure approach by WHO. And also we do the monitoring for the small grants program mentioned before. Within the public awareness activity, we use it networking of VHC association. It is done basically from door to door visits, sometimes like some seminars organized on the streets, formal, informal meetings, and of course, what's up. What's up. Nothing happens today without WhatsApp. And also we work to, to educate senior grade students. This is a safety road blueprint. And also a lot of activities are conducted on NCD risk factors prevention, like some campaigns, like sports events, like contests. So different uh, public campaigns. Uh, there are all, all of them are successful, but the one I would like to talk about this is blood pressure screening. So this is done in order to identify and to detect those residents who have high blood pressure, but they were not aware of that in order to do the referral of them to the diagnostics and treatment services. So this algorithm has been approved by the MOH and integrated to the system. So we, at the village level, we will do the screening for all adults above 18 and those who are newly diagnosed. Uh, will be uh, referred to the PHC facility to do the confirmatory diagnostics and treatment. Because VHC members, we are not uh, medical people, so we don't establish the diagnosis. We would rather say you have some blood pressure measurements, so please uh, get a check out at the PHC facility. And uh, if uh, it was a uh, false diagnostics, then uh, these are good news for you. 
So, 74% out of those screens they had the normal uh, pressure, uh, and uh, 26 have been uh, detected with high blood pressure. And, uh, and uh, out of those 26, 18% were not aware of the blood pressure statue. So, and that uh, red triangle is our target audience. So, as I've said, we've been working already for many years with MIH, starting from 2015, the blue line on the top, this is the number of the newly uh, screened people who were not aware, and the lower trend. Uh, this is the same number of people in proportion to all those who have been screened. So you can see the dynamics that it went down since 2017. And now it's kind of uh, moving upwards again. The second uh, ex successful example in the NCD prevention area that the campaign which is named be responsible mentioned before this is covering males above 18 with NCD prevention activities by using students of public schools so you, as you know males usually don't have this mental habit you know to uh, to visit uh, PHC facilities, we have a joke that males would come to to hospitals only to die. Yeah, and uh, and uh, it turned out that only the kids, only the children of males, uh, are more successful messengers to convince fathers to go to the hospitals to the PHC facility. If every day the kid keeps saying that they go to the clinic then eventually they would do it uh, so and uh, it is done uh, in a partnership with the school administration with an agreement of the school administration uh, to use kids as communicators as uh, messengers you know to advocate for the better health of their daddies so that's about the coverage in 2022 we don't have the data for the 2023 yet but even for 2022 you can see some uh, good dynamics uh, in a breakdown by different provinces except of uh, chui province because chui province this is a, a province uh, around bishkek city that's why here we find less responsible males yeah but otherwise they show some good res responsibility rate uh, shown in the number of visits to the clinics and uh, what do we see now there were many conclusions and findings but let me highlight uh, one of them according to the WHO monogram the risk of uh, cardiovascular diseases development that's the nomogram and you can see in the breakdown by provinces more or less the same from 14% uh, up to 20% uh, here you can see the coding so the yellow this is the risk, uh, risks of the C, C, uh, cardiovascular diseases development from 10 to 20 from 30 to 40 and um, that, this is about affiliate approach uh, as you know it was developed by WHO this is about the awareness level about the health conditions and so we understood if we will do only informational work only educational part uh, alone this will not be enough to change the behavioral patterns because it should be more comprehensive by improving the favorable environment uh, to change the behavioral patterns and this would require not only to inform 
but also to improve the infrastructure conditions at the level of villages. It's like you keep telling people you should be jogging in the morning, they agree, they buy in, go out in the morning, but there are no, uh, there is no infrastructure to do jogging, even just to, uh, to simple, you know, road infrastructure is missing. And that's why it should be linked if you want to be successful with the informational campaigns. And uh, uh, in uh, developing favorable environment, municipalities are our major partners, and uh, we work together with municipality bodies to convince them to buy in and to explain that the health outcomes of the residents is also a part of the uh, competencies although it is not officially uh, stipulated and this uh, affiliate approach was introduced in order to gain some uh, health-related budget allocations, and we've started this in 2022 in four provinces in the northern part of the country, and starting from this year, we shall pilot this, the effectiveness of this approach in the southern part of the country. I will be first. And uh, what are the results of the FLA approach? Out of all municipalities involved in this project, almost 44% have agreed and supported the activities on risk factors, and 52% supported the responsible campaign and to support the blood pressure screening uh, so to, uh, 30, almost like uh, 80 percent have agreed to, to purchase thermometers and um, the small grants uh, program uh, this is also another activity to contribute to the favorable environment development during the first stage in 2019 we will support the initiatives of municipal bodies in four northern provinces 12 municipalities for 12 million sums and um, this year we continue these activities just recently we have accepted the applications uh, from from more than 30 uh, municipalities and 30 of them have been supported with almost 30 million sums. And uh, in conclusion, I would like uh, to speak a little about the village house committees. So this is a unique uh, network with wide geography coverage, uh, with uh, primary, with an access, uh, the direct access to the target audience. It is a great partner for the governmental bodies, for international projects. We've been established 25 years ago to promote uh, health issues and we have managed to preserve the network and to keep it operational and we believe that this is a great contribution to the health promotion of the country and of course this slide is uh, of highest importance for those who are interested about our project and the association, you can check out these pages on Facebook and the Instagram. We are totally open to your proposals. Thank you very much for these ex uh, interesting examples of your um, actions. And right now, I would like to invite uh, online uh, Mr. Shamil Saganovich Tajibayev. So he is here with us, although we pre recorded his presentation, but he will take part in the uh, QA.
присылает мне сообщение о роли рационального питания, профилактики, снижения вреда. Заболевание служит причиной 85 50% Uh, the uh, main cause of NCDs is uh, unhealthy nutrition, and uh, the uh, cause uh, for NCDs is obesity, which uh, causes the metabolic syndrome, hypertension, hyperglycemia, uh, uh, and diabetes, hyperglycemia, and the Kazakh nutrition uh, as part. Uh, as part of the grant of the Ministry of Education, uh, we have uh, disseminated information and education materials on obesity and other NCDs. Uh, having said that, uh, we have surveyed only 3,700 3, of uh, Uh, including 2,435 2, women and uh, 3,700 uh, uh, and 1,310 men, and this was the national representative survey. And uh, the highest rate of obesity was uh, found in the southern region of Kazakhstan in Jambul Oblast. Uh, uh, the white uh, is the color of the province, then the less uh, the lower level of obesity. The more intense color is uh, the higher rate of obesity. And the highest rate of obesity among women was found uh, in Pavlodar Oblast, 42%. In other words, uh, uh, it makes an impression that in southern regions, uh, the prevalence of obesity in women is uh, a little lower than in northern provinces. Uh, Maybe this is to do with climatic, uh, some features and uh, some features or, uh, and in nutrition, and depending on the location of the region. And the same situation with regard to men. Among men, uh, the, least, uh, uh, the lowest rate of obesity are uh, uh, 10% in Jabul Oblast, and the highest uh, rate of obesity in the northern Kazakhstan, in northern Kazakhstan Oblast, uh, 30%. It is worth uh, noting that in the uh, western regions of Kazakhstan, the prevalence of obesity was uh, both uh, high, both in women and men. As it goes from this slide, uh, the prevalence of obesity depends on the age. The higher the age, the older is the age, then the higher is the rate of obesity. 15 and 19 years of age among uh, women and men, uh, 2 3 percent uh, obesity rate. 50 uh, to 64 years of age, 43 percent in women and 26 percent in men in terms of obesity. In on the whole. The obesity is more prevalent in women rather than men. In order to find out the relation or nexus between obesity and the risk factors, of uh, uh, NCDs, we have used odds ratios and adjusted uh, uh, odds ratios and 90 95% of confidence interval, and we have used uh, the two-dimensional analysis uh, and uh, uh, regression, and we have adjusted uh, we have adjusted the uh, odds ratios. As you see from this slide, among the people from 24 to 34 years of age, the uh, odds. The adjusted odds ratio to have uh, obesity is uh, four times higher than the persons uh, in the age of uh, 18 to 24 years of age, and uh, 35 uh, to 49, eight times higher. 
and 50 to 64 years of age by 15 times higher than among the person 18 to 24 years of age. Here we have the average data in women and men together. Also, there was a high prevalence of hypertension among population. Uh, to a certain extent, hypertension was a uh, 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 face of hypertension, 38% of uh, men and 34% in, in women, uh, different stages of hypertension. And 18% of men and 16% of women had the pre-hypertension. And in total, 43% and 50% of women had the normal blood pressure. Uh, this uh, slide shows uh, that the higher is uh, BMI, body mass index, uh, then the both uh, SBP and DBP is higher both in men and women. This is the red uh, curve. Uh, the red graph shows uh, uh, women, and the blue uh, shows the uh, situation in men. Uh, both uh, systolic and diastolic uh, blood pressure depends on BMI. The higher is BMI, then the higher is the prevalence of uh, SBP and DBP. The nexus uh, between the uh, blood pressure and the body mass index, uh, we have adjusted. We have adjusted uh, the odds ratio among among adult population. Uh, the arterial hypertension is much, is higher than if the uh, BMI is higher. Uh, it, uh, it is clearly shown on this on this graph. The prevalence of uh, obesity, hypertension, high sugar content in blood and cholesterol uh, in the fasting serum in people in the persons of 18 years of age and uh, depending on nationality, uh, and all these uh, three disorders, types of disorders, uh, uh, except for hypercholesteremia, uh, they were uh, very high among the Russian population than Kazakh, Kazakh, Kazakh ethnicity groups. And uh, maybe this is for, first of all to do uh, with the, the uh, nature of nutrition and meals meals and the genetic uh, predisposition. On the whole, we have to note that in Kazakhstan, there is a high prevalence of uh, risk factors among the adult population. Uh, in particular, it includes hypertension, obesity, hyperglycemia, hypercholesterolemia, and uh, and there are different risk factors. They can be uh, uh, due to ethnic, ethnic and uh, ethnicity, genetics, and uh, the healthy nutrition can reduce the risk factors for the development and progression of NCDs uh, on the whole. On this slide, uh, we uh, present the role of nutrition in the development of non-communicable diseases. Uh, they include uh, overconsumption of calories, uh, uh, as we see the prevalence of obesity and excessive BMIs, uh, uh, excessive consumption of uh, simple sugars, salt, uh, trans fat, cholesterol, and saturated fatty acids, and insufficient intake of dietary fiber, omega-3 fatty acids, micronutrients, including folic acid and other B vitamins, fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, E, K, and the number of uh, trace elements, iron, zinc, selenium. In in uh, uh, to justify the previous slides, uh, we can uh, we represent here average uh, daily consumption of total fat uh, among the school children in grades uh, eight to eleven in Kazakhstan in 2019 by Kyrgyz uh, Academy of Nutrition. 
here it clearly shows the total volume of fats, uh, the consumption of total fats uh, exceeds by 19% uh, the uh, uh, appropriate recommendation of WHO and uh, 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 fatty, uh, fatty acids by 19%, salt by 52% and sugar by two times higher. And uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, cases of uh, uh, malnutrition uh, they promote and uh, uh, instigate and trigger the non-communicable diseases. So here we can see the uh, resources of uh, the foods uh, consumed in Kazakhstan in excessive volumes. Um, total fat uh, 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 meat and meat products, oils and fats. Uh, as for the trans uh, fats, fatty acids, natural products, uh, meat and meat products, uh, uh, products of uh, uh, the uh, industrial industrial products, uh, uh, fast foods, uh, uh, products from supermarkets, fats and oils, and uh, uh, where they use uh, margarines and bakery products, uh, confectioneries. Uh, as for the salts, um, uh, bread and bread products, uh, meat and meat products, uh, pickles, all meat products, uh, soup and uh, other uh, meal, uh, other dishes. As for the sugar, uh, adding to tea, coffee, confectionery, vegetable and fruit preserves, uh, juices, sweetened drinks and yogurts. Um, uh, and the bottom line is that we have to reduce the consumption of this uh, food products, uh, which is consumed in Kazakhstan in excessive volumes, and uh, which should promote uh, the progression of NCTs. Uh, we have to reduce the consumption of these uh, food products, uh, will uh, enable uh, us uh, to reduce the harm of uh, NCTs. Yes, uh, for harm reduction of NCT, from NCTs, we have uh, to consume a variety of foods and drinks rich in different nutrients. Uh, uh, and uh, the person should have uh, uh, balanced uh, meals and nutrition. Uh, we have to limit the consumption of saturated fats, fats with uh, trans fatty acids, cholesterol, uh, and the amount of nutrients should be balanced and comply with recommended standards and dosages and adequate calorie needs. They encouraged for consumption foods to reduce the harm of NCDs, uh, first of all, vegetables and fruits on a daily basis. Uh, also, we have to consume, uh, we have to consume lots of vegetables and fruits uh, and several times a week we have to consume legumes. Uh, they are very rich in fiber and also proteins. Also, we have to consume uh, the whole grains on a daily basis uh, because of our, our food, uh, fiber and uh, uh, micro elements uh, in the shell of this uh, whole grain. So we have to consume three cups of milk or 600 grams a day. This is uh, not a pure milk and other dairy products. Also, we have to consume consume fortified uh, food uh, food fortified with vitamins and micro micro elements. We have uh, in Kazakhstan um, flour fortified with uh, uh, iron, zinc, uh, and folic acid, uh, nicotine acid, uh, and vitamins uh, B1 and B2, and salt. Uh, is iodized also. Also, multivitamin mineral complexes and uh, supplements. In Kazakhstan, and the nutrition of the modern person there is a, a high level of deficit of micro elements and vitamins, uh, or it is latent, uh, a latent uh, um, hunger. Thank you very much for this um, for the, another presentation that shows how complex is the topics and how complex issues are, uh, are with, with, when we think about non-communicable diseases. Without further ado, let me uh, introduce Rebenikova Galina Alexandrov. <laughs> Thank you. 
So now we are coming already to the daytime, so appropriate to say good day. So exciting presentations have been delivered since morning. And my presentation, not by accident, will be like the one which will finalize, because when we speak about NCDs, the reproductive health, this is a comprehensive subject integrating all the subjects we discussed before. It doesn't like my hands either. Okay, please help me with that. And uh, I would like to remind you what is the reproductive health of so this definition. Next year it will turn 30 years old because it has been formulated in 1994. So this is a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being. So this is about the interaction of many in, in ministries and agencies and of course of civil society. And the factors that impact and define the reproductive health are fully introduced and reflected in many indicators such as maternal mortality, perinatal mortality rate as well. And uh, if certain factors are addressed, uh, which are critical for reproductive health, this will have um, multiple implications for other uh, areas of health. This is about the reduced number of unsafe abortions to reduce also unwanted pregnancy. And uh, what else can affect uh, the reproductive health? These are uh, sexually transmitted infections and HIV infection, which we discussed yesterday. We cannot stop its spread. Uh, the numbers are growing. And this is said that it is being increased among the young generations uh, because this is the main force of the reproductive production. But uh, without uh, enhancing reproductive rights, we cannot achieve full-fledged agenda. Therefore, we should be improving the access to the services, modern types of contraceptives, and there should be certain services to have complete pregnancy and to treat any complications during the pregnancy or if it is needed to stop the pregnancy by safe ways. And as to the preventive activities, you can see the list of them and uh, developing the culture of healthy behavior. This is the most challenging task because it's not so easy to find the proper motivation. And it has been mentioned before, it comes from the nutritional status, obesity is also one of the factors, risk factors which may develop cardiovascular diseases. And yesterday we talked about the percentage of those who use tobacco and drugs. And in the structure of the morbidity, the Death causes fall under the cardiovascular diseases and the blood circulation diseases. So my task may be to speak from the position of the gynecologist, first of all, and this is about the family planning. Family planning, this is uh, about planning your parenthood experience uh, and it is being actively discussed in Kazakhstan. The health passport is being developed now in the country. That is the idea of pre-marriage consultancy and pre-marriage screening for the couple which is planning to establish the family so that they are well informed about the potential challenges and what can be prevented but in general when we speak about the family planning this implies to the number of the planned children at within the optimal timeline 
coming back to the reproductive rights uh, and yes in general to do the f in order to ensure proper family planning we need the equal access provided high cover high coverage with information about reproductive services and the appropriate conditions for the pregnancy to support the pregnancy and to to stop it if it is required uh, and then the next preventive activity, this is preparation for pregnancy and for the delivery. A lot is being done in Kazakhstan with the participation of the association experts. We have developed the protocol for the pre-gravidary pre pre preparation. Uh, so pre-gravida, let's say. Yeah. So this is a part of the PHC functions and this requires the involvement of all PHC specialists, not only gynecologists and obstetricians. What are the recommendations that were included? These are universal recommendations and more aimed at healthcare workers, but also you can see the link to the website developed by our association. And this is a tool for the level of the population which can help to increase the public awareness rate. Please, I would like to ask you to activate this video just to 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 show the website it is totally free access with two languages uh, provided both in Kazakh and in Russian and the resident of any part of the country which uh, has uh, either uh, Kazakh or Russian language instruction can use it so this is uh, for the website for parents and there are three questionnaires that users can uh, go through. The first one on the family planning. After filling in the survey questionnaire, you can get the individual recommendations. And if it is red, highlighted recommendations, that means this is a signal to pay attention. If it is yellow color coding, then the situation is more or less within the norm. But probably you should visit the physician and the green one it means you are in a good shape and you're doing everything correctly you are on the right track and then the second the survey if you are already pregnant and there are some uh, suspicious signs and the third one for the post delivery stage and uh, it took us two years to develop this website and the questionnaires and soon we will be launching its uh, opening and it will be presented by moh for wider public Coming back to my presentation, I would like to specify that family planning, pregnancy planning implies to the special category of patients, which is well known, but we have them as a target audience. This is a group after 18. Uh, so under 18 and after 35, those who require more uh, support. And uh, the pre prevention of STIs and HIV infection. Here I would like to speak about our teenagers and about reproductive behavior. Together with UNFPA, we conducted the analysis and produced the following numbers about uh, 3 out of 100 girls of teenage age get pregnant and 15% of them do the abortion and the average age when they start sexual relations at 16.5 uh, so under 18 this should be sexual immunity and after it is sexual freedom as they say and uh, 91 percent of those who have had uh, sexual partners are not fully informed about the hiv infection risks uh, and 20 percent of them do not use condoms so this is particularly the risk group 
uh, to be given our attention. And uh, also to speak about the survey which we have conducted this year, what are the uh, efficient uh, activities and uh, solutions and this is about the appropriate communications with teenagers of age from 15 to 19 parents and teachers were surveyed and 49 percent of teenagers reported that uh, sexual education yes is given by parents and 20 percent by close relatives but parents more than half of them reported that this sexual education questions should be included to the school curriculum plan and each third teenage each third parent needs to increase their competencies they don't know particularly how to deliver this information and the uh, Seventy-four percent of the survey teachers said that yes, school the school should be supporting the culture of the sexual uh, education. But forty-four percent mentioned that they are not psychologically ready to discuss uh, the questions of the sexual education, and twenty-four percent reported they didn't have uh, good knowledge on that how to make it a constructive discussion. And fifty-two percent of teachers believed that support uh, the support from parents uh, uh, will be helpful. And the infertility that's another trend and social infertility when the first pregnancy is being postponed in kazakhstan the first pregnancy happens on average at the age of 29 and uh, but the first sexual experience starts from 13 years and uh, the, therefore it means they should we should have a good access to condoms and the prevention of unwanted pregnancy we can see that each six pregnancy is being aborted yes we we've managed to reduce these numbers but then we got to the plateau effect and we can see that mainly in the age from 25 up to 34 this is a group of women who would do abortions and uh, very low uh, level of uh, condom use and the percentage is proportion to the age group the all the older is a woman more she has opportunities to use condoms because uh, it could be expensive uh, and uh, uh, in younger ages only eight percent would use but then it goes up uh, in age from 24 and the IUD is a leading type of contraceptives and hormone-based contraceptives are not that popular. What are the modern trends among the reproductive age women? So there is a tendency to decrease the number of desired children except of some provinces in Turkestan, for example. This is a reverse trend to increase the number of children per family from 25 up to 30 that is the age group which is most active with the delivery yes contraceptives are available but not to the extent it is desired and there are certain challenges such as the lack of the specific budget item line to procure condoms insufficient numbers to cover young people and other age groups according to the decree of the President, uh, uh, people under 35 uh, should be uh, better uh, covered. And uh, so th these are the economic calculations uh, to prove that it is more cost efficient for the government uh, to uh, pro procure contraceptives rather than to cover the expenses of uh, aborting unwanted uh, pregnancies uh, and first of all we should uh, do more work with uh, forming healthy behavioral patterns uh, safe uh, behavior uh, providing quality consultancy for uh, families uh, and also to do better detection and treatment of women with reproductive diseases Thank you.
Jason, I think we have a couple of more minutes for uh, questions and answers. So feel free to ask our uh, um, delegates. I can see there is uh, a question. Good day. The day has started with very interesting presentations. This is a question to Talgat Sagijanovich. Thanks a lot for the data which you have provided to us because this is of uh, this is a concern for all of us. What kind of a governmental actions should be undertaken in order to ban and to stop the smuggling of counterfeited products. And the next question, this is uh, out of curiosity. Why the project was named Aphelia? Because I tried to do the Google search but failed to find the answer to that. Thanks a lot for your question. You know, I did not introduce into my presentation the measures to be undertaken uh, on purpose because I wanted to discuss it. First of all, there should be appropriate control function established to control imported goods. If it was not, uh, if it wasn't corrupted, uh, then of course, if the control function was not corrupted, the situation would be good. But it comes from the customs committee, from the customs control over imported products. And then you see these products enter each country through corrupted uh, techniques which is well known. Yes, from the legislative point of view, it is uh, well, uh, you know, addressed uh, and uh, no amendments are required, in fact, but then at the level of the enforcement of that legislation, we are suffering because of the lack of uh, consciousness or, aware or responsible position at the level of the officials, uh, just like what I didn't show to you what happens with counterfeited contraceptives. The half of the count counterfeited products, these are contraceptives, which are imported illegally to our markets. And uh, therefore, it affects uh, the general situation. And therefore, we are in the situation of distrust. And uh, therefore, uh, contraceptives are not uh, well used by the population because of the low quality of the fake products. But uh, the main uh, measure, this should be to increase the uh, diligence and the responsibility of citizens uh, to stop the entry of the fake products to the country and good pharmacological supervision. You see, if Pharma control says that if you discover some uh, low quality of fake product at the pharmacy shop, send your application to the prosecutor's office and then the prosecutorial officers would call the pharmacy shop notifying, okay, on such and such date at such and such time, we shall be visiting your pharmacy shop and of course uh, the smart people, they will uh, get it hidden by the time the inspection arrives. So, and uh, as I've said, uh, uh, you, you know that and there is certain discrepancy and inconsistency in terms of the statistics officially reported about the smuggled goods. And we have also digital reports. So there are two inconsistent reports issued by the Minister of Interior and by the Minister of the Digital Technologies. And uh, and uh, as to my dat data, the companies which uh, pharma companies which register drugs as food products, and then it goes through the scrutiny of the food control agency, and the share of the f medicine like paracetamol, it will be like 200 milligrams, and it is 0 0.2. It is less than therapeutic dosage, but because it has other editions added to the authority sold out as uh, supplements and this should be 
uh, you know, made public, you know, it's like I raise my voice, but it's not enough. I mean, uh, Natalia Shumskaya asked uh, also, no? ah. <clears throat> So, Ophelia project, this is not, uh, in fact, this is the approach which was developed by WHO, if I'm not mistaken, two years ago. This is to increase the health awareness of the population, which speaks to the necessity to do not only the informational campaign, but also to improve the local infrastructure. So those who develop infrastructure locally should be understanding the health impact. Yeah, so that's the approach and the strategy which has been recently developed and tested. No, the question was different. Why the name is Ophelia? So we believe that comes up as an abbreviation. I also would like to ask in your presentation, you said that in each uh, province you have the group of volunteers. In fact, I understand how it is extremely difficult to motivate volunteers and to attract uh, volunteers. Uh, we would like to gain some best uh, practices from you. Yes, this question has been asked to us for 20 years. We still don't know what is the answer. It just has happened that way that um, you see each village resident would find his or her personal motivation to 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 be the volunteer of course we try to respond to those needs uh, of volunteers who show up at the vhc offices and when you look at these people and you see that they've been working for free like for 20 years uh, and uh, sometimes they are uh, you see appreciated sometimes they are not appreciated um, by the residents uh, and uh, sometimes it gets even exaggerated uh, to the exaggerated stage like uh, for example one said uh, my daughter uh, delivered uh, twins and i believe because i'm the volunteer or for example i've got good harvest crop it's because i'm the volunteer so some illogical uh, you know relation and when we um, we surveyed people when we asked who are vhc volunteers uh, some people said these are the missionaries uh, health missionaries yeah because they work for the social benefits uh, yeah for the for the social well-being it started first as a source of information to improve their own health at, at first but then they've developed this, recognized the need to share this information. Because you see the idea for non-medical people to get uh, some uh, valid uh, information from the sources approved by MOH, they get trained and then they want to share this uh, healthy practices with my friends, with my neighbors. So th that strategy uh, was proven to be efficient, but also maybe that is the peculiarity of mentality. Uh, so somehow it worked out and the project which has been launched as uh, health promotion activities, uh, uh, the project itself has been terminated, but the network keeps living. Thank you very much uh, for all the speakers for very interesting presentations. Uh, my question is to Galina Gribenikova. Uh, dear colleagues, I'm happy to see you as for the maternal mortality and, uh, and the preg uh, 
ad, uh, teenage uh, pregnancy, adolescent pregnancy. Uh, if we speak about Kyrgyzstan, we are ranked the first in terms of the evidences of maternal mortality among uh, Eastern European countries and Central Asian countries. Now we are ranked the fourth in terms of teenage pregnancy and using the uh, contraceptives uh, it makes only 16 percent and in your presentation i have seen there is a reduction of uh, uh, the uh, rate of using the uh, contraceptives what are the factors uh, influencing the use of contraceptives what is the rate of maternal mortality and teenage pregnancy Adolescent pregnancy. I'm also very much happy to see you. Thank you very much for your question. Uh, during the COVID, uh, the maternal mortality rate went up. Uh, as for the uh, adolescent pregnancy, uh, there is a certain trend for decline, uh, but uh, it remains uh, high, it persists to be high. And uh, we held uh, the scientific conference, the Reproductive Health uh, uh, Youth uh, and young people, and there is a problem with accessing the contraceptives. Uh, this is one of the problems. This is uh, uh, to do with the high cost of contraceptives, and uh, some of the outpatient clinics, uh, they purchase uh, contraceptives uh, 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 based on the residual principle, so uh, at least a uh, priority. So, and there is no uh, schedule or plan uh, for a procurement of contraceptives. and. Uh, and maybe uh, uh, the last uh, but not the least uh, maybe this is to do with the lack of contraceptive culture when we ask uh, what methods of contraception you use uh, and they believe that contraception is only to do with hormonal drugs and they say no i don't take uh, their hormonal drugs and uh, the, uh, uh, during the first intercourse, uh, they don't take any uh, use any contraceptives, and we uh, uh, deal with the consequences. We uh, advocate the promotion uh, of contraceptives and economic benefits on procurement of contraceptives. We had uh, several meetings, and last year, at the very high level, when we uh, delivered uh, our messages uh, on the need to procure uh, contraceptives, and we believe that we will advance at some point in terms of uh, promotion of contraceptives. Uh, the use of contraceptives is a little higher than uh, in your country. Official statistics is uh, 31 uh, percent. Thank you very much to all the speakers, and now you are all invited to the coffee and tea. Coffee break, please.